You can't break the rules. As much as you may think they suck, the powers that be are in control, so what they say goes. And if you choose to ignore this, there's going to be consequences, and those consequences are usually going to come out of your pocket. This has been the case in wrestling for years too, especially because you need to send a message that goes to the rest of the locker room, stop being a dick. Obviously they're not, but that's how WWE has seen it. So I'm Simon Miller, this is What Culture Wrestling, and here's the 10 most expensive fines WWE ever gave wrestlers for breaking the rules. Number 10, Brian Kendrick and $1,000 for weed. And when I say $1,000, I mean $1,000 multiple times. It's not like this was exclusive to him either. A quick journey through history has shown the likes of Evan Bourne, Sean Waltman and The Godfather all partaking in this, as well as Randy Orton, who was suspended for smoking a joint in 2006. Two years after that, reports emerged that one particular wrestler had been fined a whopping 12 times for having weed in his system, meaning somebody had spent $12,000 on a ignoring the rules. Of course, this was Brian Kendrick, and his insistence on this was one of the reasons he was let go in 2009. Now, far be it for me to pass an opinion on this, but if you have an employee who finds marijuana a great way to relax after the stresses from pro wrestling or being thrown around a ring, Maybe you just let him do it. Number nine, Enzo Amore and $2,500 for CBD. After Enzo Amore had been released from WWE, he didn't hold back. When appearing on Talk is Jericho, for example, he told the story of getting fined $250 for farting during an NXT promo class. Seems a bit much, but little did he know. During that same interview, Amore opened up about how there's fines are plenty going around backstage for the use of cannabis, which seemed odd as most of the guys were using it. Enzo also revealed this stretch to CBD oils and creams with a fine of $2,500 waiting for those who were going to do it anyway. Much like Brian Kendrick, Amore carried on because he was making enough cash and it helped get him through the week. So now please do go see the point I made about seven seconds ago. Number eight, Titus O'Neil and $5,000 for mucking around with Vincent Kennedy McMahon. This one was fun, wasn't it? Way back in 2016, where we all thought we were saying goodbye to Daniel Bryan after being told he had to retire, Titus O'Neil thought he'd give his boss a friendly nudge because why not introduce some levity? Unfortunately, McMahon was not into this and was caught off guard and boy, oh boy, did he lose it. He was clearly mad with Titus on screen and behind the scenes apparently blew a gasket, if he had it his way, O'Neill was gonna be fired. Instead, he was suspended for 60 days, missed WrestleMania, and had to pay a fine of $5,000. Jim Ross spoke on this as well and doubled down on the idea that we dropped at the start of this video. One would assume this was done to inform the rest of the roster what not to do when the boss was around. All has been forgiven since, and thank goodness for that. I mean, just go Google Titus O'Neill and see what he does outside the walls of wrestling. He is a damn hero. Number seven, Ric Flair and Randy Savage, and five thousand dollars for blading. The Macho Man Randy Savage and Ric Flair may have had an excellent match at WrestleMania 8, but they were also fined five thousand dollars. At the time, WWE had a strict no blood policy, but this was the Nature Boy. Damn it! He knew at the show of shows some color would put his world title match over the top, so that's what he did. Then, almost as soon as he and Savage walked through the curtain, they were were punished in their wallets. Bizarrely, on the same night, Bret Hart also bled when he fought Roddy Piper, but it came down to a question of evidence. Flair could be seen doing this on camera, whereas the hitman and the rowdy one performed it under a cloak of darkness. Well, that and afterwards, Hart and Piper worked everyone by pretending to be mad at each other over this backstage. Number six, Jerry Sags and $7,000 for farting. So yes, farting is back again, and sure, it can be damn disrespectful, but what do you have to do to let one rip so badly you get fined? Well, I'll tell you. Happening on a flight over to Europe, Jerry Sags of the Nasty Boys fame lived up to his name when he went up to Miss Elizabeth and farted right in her face. If you want to know how intense it was, tag partner Brian Nobbs described it as blowing her hair dry. So that just sounds awful. Husband Randy Savage was livid over this as he was goaded on by the British Bulldog, who no doubt found this hilarious. The guy laughed at everything. And he did see Sags get called into Vince McMahon's office and be informed that he would be paying Miss Elizabeth Rhodes' expenses, which were $7,500. I don't think this was worth it. Number five, Brian Nobbs and $10,000 for weed. So in the early 90s, drugs were a massive no-no in the WWE, given that Vince McMahon had just gone through a government-led steroid trial. The last thing he needed was more bad PR so everything was on the finable list. Bret Hart would go on to mention how stupid this was as it just led to wrestlers turning to alcohol instead, and one person who clearly wasn't ready to hear it at all was Brian Nobbs. As Scott Hall tells it, the first time he met McMahon, he was having a full-on row about this with the nasty boy. Nobbs felt like he had every right to relax after the show, McMahon disagreed, so left him with a $10,000 fine. 
still if you think about it. Brian kind of opened the doors to the likes of RVD and Matt Riddle, and <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. Number four, John Cena and paying $88,000 in other wrestlers' fines because they were goofing around. A relatively new relevation this was, and it came from the mouth of Aiden English, who recounted a story for SmackDown in 2018. Aiden was tagging with Rusev and Baron Corbin as they took on the Usos and AJ Styles in a dark match, and as fan footage showed, at one point Jimmy and Jay just smashed out super kick after super kick to the point they were definitely having a super kick party. The fans were going so nuts for this, everyone convinced the referee to kick Aiden too, before Styles put on the referee's shirt and made the three count. I tell you, it was a lovely moment. When they got backstage though, nobody was happy at all. Upper management felt like this was a blatant lack of disrespect, and not only were they told they were being fined, but even being fired was on the table. No wonder wrestlers don't break the flipping script. As English admitted, however, it was John Cena who stepped in to pay this $88,000 total fine. I suppose because he realized that all six guys had gone out there and done their job. Entertaining the fans. Who knew? Number three, Lars Sullivan and $100,000 for offensive remarks. As it had turned out prior to signing with the company, Sullivan had made some horrendous comments on an online forum which were without doubt misogynistic, racist, and homophobic. Rightfully so, this was picked up by some of the roster as well as sponsors Mars Wrigley, who stated they were shocked and disgusted by them, as you would. Lars issued an apology but also landed a $100,000 fine for all of this, and after he was released in 2021, doubled down on the fact that he had a lot to learn. Let's hope he means it too. This kind of thinking has no place anywhere. Number two, Batista and $100,000 for blading. Blood and weed seem to be the worst things you can do in WWE, and blood struck again in 2008 when Big Dave Batista got fined $100,000 for letting the red come out of his head. The reason it was so severe is because WWE had just switched from being a TV-14 product to a PG one as they tried to attract more sponsors and then almost instantly a giant man was taking a razor and trying to cut his head open. Happening when the animal took on Chris Jericho in a steel cage match on Raw, Batista was convinced to get the traction it needed, he would have to bleed. He did that after a pipe shot to the skull, and as you could imagine, Vince McMahon was pissed. They got yelled at as soon as they were backstage with Jericho referee Mike Kyoda and producer Dean Malenko all being fined $5,000 each too, but because Batista is a good dude, he offered to pay for them. The former world champion has been open about this over the years and admitted he knew exactly what he was doing and was aware of the consequences. He thought the fight needed it, so punishment be damned. Number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin and $250,000 for quitting. In June 2002, Stone Cold Steve Austin walked out of the WWE, fed up with how he was being used and the creative being presented to him. It all stemmed from the fact Vince McMahon wanted him to lose to Brock Lesnar a random King of the Ring qualifying match, something Austin believed should be held off to a bigger pay-per-view. He was likely right. The two buried the hatchet a year later, but there was no way the rattlesnake could just walk back into a locker room that he did effectively abandon. It also meant the top star in the company missed appearances that fans had paid money for. He would have to be punished. The result? A $650,000 fine which must have sent Stone Cold Steve Austin's jaw through the floor. Somehow the bionic redneck was able to talk that man down to a cool $250,000. And that was that. Unless you were the financial advisor for Steve Austin. That guy probably had a bad day too. Know of any other expensive fines that WWE gave wrestlers for breaking the rules? Make sure you let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this. Give us a follow on social media and there's other videos right now on the screen. Why don't you give them a click? My name is Simon Whatculture. Thank you for joining me as always and I'll talk to you when I talk to you.